As was said on Sunday, there are several questions that remain unanswered for us. What is it that makes you get up in the morning? What is this Tao, Dharma, will of God, purpose of life? What is it when it's neither a wave or a particle? And now, in this place where we find ourselves, where stillness, the stillness of being ever present, and the movement of life meet to cancel one another out and produce that which we now can say is a covenant that we've made, an oath that's now present in our life, unformed, but always there. There's that story about Isaiah, the direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. And he was in service as a warrior to the sheikh of the day. He was on the battleground and he had his sword at the throat of the enemy. But just as he was about to plunge the saber into the man's jugular vein, the enemy spat in his face. The Syed stopped for an instant and then laid down his sword. The enemy said, you had me at advantage. You could have killed me. Why did you not slay me? The Syed said, I've made an oath to serve only Allah. And when you spat in my face, I was angry so I would have killed you for myself. Then there's two arch enemies who met on a field in Xinjiang province. And as soon as they met, blood started to flow. They were both very adept at the art of swordsmanship. So they slashed at one another until finally one of them, bloodied and mortally wounded, fell to the ground. A, a large group of onlookers had gathered around. But after an instant, one warrior who was left standing turned to the other and fell down on his knees beside his fallen enemy and began to wipe the blood and try to suture his wounds. Now one of the onlookers said, Why are you doing this? You've just killed him. Why don't you finish him off? And the warrior remained silent for a moment, but the bystander was adamant said, why, why don't you kill him? Just finish him off. The warrior turned to him and said, all is life. There is nothing but life. I honor life. I do not serve death. I only serve life. His enemy looked up into his face They'd clashed swords many times before, but his enemy closed his eyes in peace. What is the similarity or the difference between these two little anecdotes and this covenant, this oath, that we find ourselves tacitly living at every moment, being in that place where we're ever present because there's nowhere else for us to be. And the movement of life in all its forms, linear, vertical, horizontal, spiral,
continuous, constant and eternal movement. What is this oath? But if we look at these two stories and see their similarity and their difference, we perhaps can get a cleaning for ourselves as to what our covenant is. They work in you. a very important question for us because it enables us to answer that other question that's there for us. What is it that we do? What is it that we do without doing? story uh, uh, when he spot on him and they kill him for him he would have to kill him for himself it's um, he will not longer be following the will of the spirit by his own will what does it mean something will be suggested do we live like that spontaneously how do they go together? How does it work in us? Some don't be there. There's paradox. There is a continuum. There is an unfolding. And yet everything is here. There's no planning. There's no need. But now as we reach a deeper and deeper understanding of the workings of it, through our experiences of it and awareness of it, there still remains the need for us to be able to give expression to it. So there will be a laboring over this, continuing in whatever form it takes. It has to be imparted, it has to be shown.
breath as we can feel as we sit here. It is not a machination of mind. Your understanding and not knowing do not arise. Thursday, buddy? Yeah.